Now, Chris Christie and Rand Paul's war of words. This is a lot of, about a whole lot more than just the guys going after each other. A whole vision personifies today's GOP and who really represents the best chance for their future. And next, is Obama the leader that you can believe in? And is it time he got his hands a little bit dirtier in the name of accomplishing something? And later, what's happened to the music industry? Why is it getting more and more difficult to support somebody as a professional musician? Is piracy to blame or is it just part of the reality of the 21st century? Is it the spread of a do digital download to blame? We'll get into that with somebody who calls it a vocation. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French, and thanks so much for joining us this Thursday evening, August 1. Let's start tonight with the split in the GOP. Now, for years, we've been talking about it right here on the program. A lot of guests, including former electives, even elected officials within the Republican Party, looking over their shoulder to say, from what they really think to what they have to say to stay elected. We've hosted more than a few frustrated folks in the grand old party who try to move their party back from the far right to the moderate middle, but yet again, the primary challenges they face when they take those stances are enough here that some are even drummed out of office just trying to do it. Well, today, that split, it is on full display in both the new poll and in a war of words among two of the party's biggest and fastest rising names. Let's start with the latest GOP celebrity smackdown. And for that, let's bring in our own senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. And Rich, we've been building up to this all week long. We've been showing you clips in the latest shots between New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, both big names in the party, both mentioned as 2016 White House hopefuls. Their kerfuffle began last weekend when Christie attacked Paul and other libertarians, essentially for their isolationism, their desire not to engage in military conflicts. Paul later shot back at Christie and Long Island's Peter King, saying, quote, they're precisely the same people who are unwilling to cut the spending and they're gimme, 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 gimme all my Sandy money now, that a direct line from Rand Paul, accusing them of bankrupting the government and letting there not be enough money left over for national defense. That got Chris Christie back into Chris Christie form yesterday. I got nothing personal against Senator Paul. If we disagree on certain issues, we disagree. You know, it's seeming his response seems that he has something personal against me, but that's okay. Just get in line on that front. So if Senator Paul wants to start looking at where he's going to cut spending to afford defense, maybe he should start looking at cutting the pork barrel spending that he brings home to Kentucky um, at $1.51 for every dollar and not look at New Jersey where we get 61 cents for every dollar. So maybe Senator Paul could could you know deal with that when he's trying to deal with the reduction of spending on the federal side but i doubt he would uh, because most washington politicians only care about bringing home the bacon so that they can get reelected. ouch how did Rand paul respond well first he attacked back and then he seemed to wave the white flag uh, this is the king of bacon talking about bacon and attacking me isn't helping the party he's hurting the party hurting the party or hurting him. Either way, Paul's next suggestion was to start drinking. If he wants to break bread and see if we can find some common ground, I think it'll help the party to not have us feuding. We're going to have to patch things up. If we can sit down, I'll, I'm inviting him for a beer. Anytime he would like to come down and sit down at the pub right around the corner from the Senate. Well, Chris Christie does like beer, but apparently he doesn't like Rand Paul all that much. Well, listen, I'm not into that stuff. I don't know why Senator Paul's so, you know, out of whack about this. I've done, at the end of the day, um, I never called him any names. He and suggested so, maybe the two of you sit down and, and have a beer and bury the hatchet. I'm running for re-election in New Jersey. I don't really have time for that at the moment. You know, I mean, if I find myself down in Washington, I'll certainly look him up. But I don't suspect I'll be there anytime soon. I've got work to do here. And that's what I'll be focusing my time and energy on, along with the rebuilding of the state after Sandy and dealing with the other issues that invariably come on the desk of a governor when you're responsible for actually doing things and not just debating. Now, if they do meet in the 2016 primaries, it may start advantage Rand Paul. Paul is polling better than Christie. He's also got higher approval ratings and lower negative ratings than Christie. Christie, by the way, the highest disapproval ratings of any likely 2016 candidate among Republican primary voters. And by the way, among Tea Party Republicans, the divide's even larger. Paul is even more popular. Christie, even less so. Rich? All right, Andrew, thank you. Let's bring in our panel on this. Rich Valdez, former Christie administration official and columnist now with the Washington Times community section. Dominic Carter, political journalist, author, and Andrew, who you already met. All right. Um, 
Rich, me, and Dominic debate this all the time. I say Chris Christie's still the most underestimated politician. Um, and he welcomed this fight, I got a feeling, because he saw what happened to Romney, and he saw if you try and run to the far right, um, you may win the primary, but you don't win the general election. You win the battle, but you lose the war. And if he's serious about running, like we all think he is in 2016, um, he'd love to get uh, make it clear there's a distinction between the Rand Pauls and the Tea Party types and him. Uh, you work for the man. You agree with that? I completely agree. I think uh, Governor Christie is is uh, very out of the box kind of a thinker. He's not your typical Republican. Uh, he's rather conservative on a lot of social issues, but he also, uh, unlike the president right now, ha he has been able to rally members of the opposite party to get things done. And I think that's just a testament of the, his leadership style and, and the way that he carries himself as a leader. But you see at the same end, I mean, you look at Mitch McConnell here, okay, Senate Minority Leader. He is going to get primary, and it looks like he's going to have a real fight on his hands because he's seen as enabling President Obama. And he's built this whole thing that he said no to the president for everything. And for people who like to see Washington do things will agree. He says no to everything, and he's obstructionary. And even he's getting challenged. So isn't there a message to Christie that, hey, throwing your arm around the president um, right after the hurricane or uh, being willing to work with the other side is not a recipe for re-election or election on a national level? I don't think so. I think that that's exactly the appeal that many people have for the governor. I think Republicans rank and file, I think they support him in many ways and they oppose him sometimes. But more so, the support that he gets from, from those at large, his approval ratings in New Jersey, uh, they're through the roof. Beca and that's why. It's because he's been able to relate, I think, with the voters at large. So I, I think that R Senator Paul took a, took a, a shot at the governor um, in response to some comments he made that weren't necessarily directed toward him, but I think that uh, those that were there kind of brought him in his direction. You know, Richard, I've been telling you for months that Chris Christie is the man. Oh, my <laughs> God. Hold on. i got to get my hip waiters on here. Did you get that on tape? Oh, he's been <laughs> waiting for Christie to explode. It just hasn't happened yet. I'm being sarcastic. Richard is right on this one. He's been calling the star appeal of Christie, and I've said that he's a bad impersonation of Rudy Giuliani set to explode. On this one, it's nice to see, I have to be frank with you, to see Governor Christie put some Senator Rand Paul in his place and he is doing it in a great way and Christie is telegraphing to all of us that he's not going to bend like a pretzel to the far right to get the nomination and it's refreshing to see that it, it, it appears that he may be willing to engage in this battle for the soul of the Republican body, Party to bring it back to mainstream instead of letting the Tea well, Party nuts take you over. This you and Andrew. Do you think their problem, the Republican Party right now, and there's been a lot of back and forth. It's not just these two guys, but they're two terrific symbols, a Tea Party guy and somebody who isn't willing to go there just to, uh, to go along to get along, right? Is it the message or the messenger? Can you win as a Republican saying the things, not just in New Jersey, which is a blue state, let's be honest here, but can you say the things that Christie says and believe in middle ground and compromise on some things? He's still conservative. Um, and get elected nationally? Or is it just they haven't had the right messenger here who will say what he thinks and be genuine article here one way or the other? Which is it, message or messenger that's their problem? We'll see, and that's why Christie's going to be a, a great test example. With Romney, folks can see through someone that's not genuine, a genuine. And that was the problem for Romney. He'll say anything, do anything to get elected. With Christie, for the most part, whether you like him or not, you know the guy's a straight shooter, and he's going to tell you exactly what's on his mind, putting the polls aside, if that's possible for two seconds for a politician.